All right, so here's the problem. We all know that this is a much larger, heavier engine. There's no denying that. It's pretty obvious the back is sitting very high and the front is sitting, well, very low. Yeah, actually, so the LS motor weighs 200 kilos and the Duramax is about 380, so almost double. So here's what we're gonna do to fix that. Got some new gear from Superior Engineering now. Obviously, we've got some new springs. What we normally do is go for a real heavy duty spring and slightly higher than what I want. Obviously, three inch is the lift I got in this, so that's a four inch spring. So it should sit at about three inch. And these, these are pretty badass, but very crucial for the Duramax. They are hydraulic bump stops. Now, the reason you need them is because the diff is very close to the starter motor on up travel and also my drive shaft is close to my transmission cooling line. So in order to protect those, you need a really good bump stop. So when the diff comes up, it doesn't want to punch those components. Right, whole lot of steel. So this is obviously gonna be a bit of a weld-in kit. These plates go on top of the shock towers, basically up in there. They get welded on, a whole lot of threads and bits and pieces get welded into that. So the plan is to basically take the wheels off lift the front of the car up with the engine crane to the height that I want, and then I can move the diff through its motion, drop the car down to the full bump zone where it's protected. That's where we set it, weld it, forget it, use it, that's the plan. Okay, so that's not gonna work. It's a lot heavier than I anticipated. That poor little engine crane couldn't hold it. So we're on the hoist now, and we should be able to lift it up. Now I pretty much wanna pull out the shocks, springs, so we can bump it right down. How good are instructions? Actually, one thing I do love about the Superior Engineering kits, they always have really good instructions. And for this kind of stuff, I sort of need it. Having a read through this, there's a few gussets and plates that go on for strengthening, but before we do that, we need to cut a hole right in here, which is basically your top hat where the spring seat goes onto. We need a hole through there for the bump stop to go through, which means I get to play with my new toy. Ah, that new toy is this bad machine. I can't believe it. I actually bought it like a week ago maybe, and I actually need one now. How's the timing? But the cool thing about this one, it's not just any old plasma cutter. It has its own air. If you have a look at that, internal air setup. So you don't need an external air compressor to run this. You just plug it in, earth it, bang, start cutting. Okay, all the brackets and gussets are welded on, the striker plate's on as well. I've just thrown some bolts in there to make sure the holes line up, then gone and fully welded it, just like the instructions said. So the next thing is, um, I think it's setting up bump stops now. So we're gonna whip around the other side and get it to the same stage. I'm not gonna worry about filming that, of course. And then we'll come back and start setting up this actual bump stop, get the air out of it, fully lower it down to the position that I need. Then you can weld that plate in, throw some bolts in, give it a lick of paint, job done. That does look good. So my camera went flat, so we didn't see the actual installation bit, but got the new springs in, and you can see the hydraulic bump stops basically go in the factory position right in the middle there. Got the shocks back on now, so I guess now it's time to put the wheels on, and she's pretty much trip ready. I just realized I didn't tail off the end of the last episode where the transmission wasn't shifting. Completely kind of forgot to lead in this episode with that, because the people who've been watching might be wondering what was going on with that. I got it sorted pretty quickly. It was basically um, a couple of wiring issues. I went down to um, see Heath and his spark, he just plugged in a computer to the transmission ECU, found out a couple of wires weren't working um, after swapping out different ECUs and that we reflashed it and it began shifting. I forgot to film any of that. Um, I don't even know if I got photos or anything on my phone, but it wasn't a big drama. Um, it literally took a couple of hours and then the thing was driving sweet. So we were ready to hit the beach. We're on Fraser Island. Can you believe it? We finally finished the build. This is the first trip, taking it straight up to the tip. This is the plan today. We did camp last night, but didn't do any filming. We're gonna head up to Nagala Rocks now um, and see if this thing can pull 
car, but I don't just have the ute. We are towing a trailer, so I've got one of the Patriot camper trailers on the back. Um, they loaned it to me for a trip we were meant to do around Australia, but COVID shut that down. So I bought it with me and uh, we'll see how it goes. Now, another cool thing that I've added since finishing the build, the guys at Duramax Tuner over in America have done the tuning this thing. It's a five-way switch, a DSP5 switch. Basically, you've got like stock, it's uh, light tow, heavy tow, sport mode, and race mode, which adds 300 horsepower. I think the figures were about 600 horsepower and 1,500 newton meters of torque, and it's really nice to be able to switch those tunes. <laughs> but, I haven't built my gearbox, so I can't use that tune just yet. So we're on a tow mode, which adds about 80 horsepower, and hopefully that's enough to get us up this steep hill. So let's go see if there's a few cars bogged there. Here she is, here's the rig on the beach. It's been an absolute dream to drive. Um, I have had some starter motor issues, but we won't talk about that. Not a good start. Anyone got a spare starter motor? I haven't even hit the bar yet, Sam, and he's under the car. <laughs> I'll put in if it doesn't work, we'll just call the tow truck. Other than that, when the motor is running, it is actually working really good. So I don't, this is the problem with Nagala, right? So I don't have manual shift working, which is basically I can't select the gears. I put my foot down in drive and it will choose the gears on its own. So I'm a bit worried it'll jump in a third or something, revs die down, I lose momentum. Um, what else? I don't really have low range working for some strange reason, but we'll see the boys go first. One of the boys has an RB patrol with He's not tying anything, he's got no extra weight with a rooftop or anything, so he can go before me. If I get bogged with the trailer on, he can just kind of pull me up, so that's the plan. The last time I was through here was about six years ago with the old wagon patrol. Bring back some memories actually. Also, having people bog that's pretty standard. But again, it's this guy is stuck. Leave that way. It's a possibility he hasn't let his tyres down enough, but I'm not going to make that assumption too soon. So, I'm side matching, I'm going to put my tyres down a bit more as well. You can always never forget your trailer. So, the trailer is obviously like a dead weight. We're going to whack this down to probably, you can't really go off pressure because it's so much lighter than a car. I reckon 10 pounds, and you just want to watch out bag. Make sure you're getting the same sort of footprint as you are with the car, and you should be set right. Who's going first? The real question is who's going to run up with the camera to get the shot? The things we got to do for the bloody shot. Being exhausted. Ah! <laughs> See ya. So quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Too easy, mate. Too easy. My engine temps at 110, but who gives a shit? <laughs> yes! Dude, that's sick. Just towed a trailer up in a gala. 100% thought I was getting bogged there. It is giveaway time, and I'm super excited about this giveaway because, well, for a couple of reasons. First off, 
we have two prizes. This is pretty awesome. So the winner of this giveaway gets to basically select which one they want. Now the two prizes are, first one is a full set of rims from the guys at Wheel Pros. You can choose either like Fuel Off-Road, KMC, you can get yourself some bead locks, whatever you want. We've got a set of rims to give away, or you can choose, this is pretty awesome, a brand new product that I've been searching for for a long time. It is a portable air conditioner. Now if you live in, in Australia or Queensland, specifically, you know it's hot and camping can be uncomfortable when you're hot. This isn't just a normal, uh, a bit of air blowing across some ice blocks and it's like an evaporative, no, this is an actual compressor portable air con system. It's the only one I've ever seen on the market and I managed to get my hands on one to give away to you guys. So all you gotta do to enter this competition is comment down below where you're from in the state, or well, not in the state, where you're from in Australia, tell me what state you're in and what four wheel drive you have. And I'm gonna select a winner at random to either win the air con uh, kit or the set of rims, whichever you prefer. Pretty damn awesome. So get commenting below to enter that. Number two, uh, we have merch finally back in stock. I know we haven't had any for a while, but we've finally restocked. You can get hold of the retro tee. We've got the classic tees and your favorites, the bucket hats and the caps, the subbies, the whole lot is all back in stock. If every person buys one thing, I promise I'm gonna get myself a haircut. The last thing, the Brisbane Fall Drive Show is happening from the 18th to the 20th of March. I am going to be there with the Van Cruiser and the Patrol. Two cars, the first time you guys can see both of them together, so definitely get down to the Brisbane Showgrounds, 18th to the 20th. I'll put a link below where you can get yourself tickets at a discounted rate. Use code BNB to save yourself 15%. Make sure you pre-order those tickets so you can come to the show. You need to make sure you have them before you arrive, obviously. Um, and that is about it. Let's get back to the program. Make sure you enter the competition, giveaway, merch, and four-wheel drive show. There's a lot happening at the moment, isn't there? It's a motherfucking ball ranger! Woo! <laughs> I ain't gonna bog that thing, except the guy that got popped before that was in a Ford Ranger. <laughs> and the freight train made it quite well. It looked very just chill, but it was like just punching through with that trail. It was sick. It looked cool. Yeah, slipping away. You made it to the top, babe. We made it. <laughs> this is the tip, according to my maps. Yeah, I'm looking at that. I think we're, we are the reef the cave. All right, here we are to set up for the night. The water is so much nicer over this way. There's no big waves. It's a lot calmer, which is sweet. Pump up the floaties and go for a swim. Um, but yeah, I pretty much got primo position because this is the end of the camping zone, right in the zone where it says no more camping, tent, view out in the ocean tonight. Girl's already in the water. That's Krakatini. Separate beer for you. That'll wake me up. Living Barry. Tell you what, this Duramax makes camping so much more pleasurable. Just smooth. Actually, let's have a look. I think the biggest thing is everything's cooler. Exhaust is cooler, engine temp's cooler, oil's cooler, transmission's cooler. But it's working really well. A couple of issues, it's rubbing there. A couple of rub points on the um, intercooler lines. There's another rub on the other one too. The bonnet's just catching. Um, they're all easy fixes. Wiring, a bit more wiring to sort out. But um, that's for the aircon they got done last minute. But um, it's working good too. The floor with the car builder stuff, we put two layers. We did the sound deadening and the acoustic lining, which is a heat shield too. And the whole firewall is heat shielded. And the aircon actually works because before the floor was getting hot, even though the aircon was working, the floor was getting that hot, it was kind of combating itself. So that's all sorted. Um, yeah, just way more nicer to drive. So I guess a bit of backstory, the whole idea why I'm towing the trailer. Um, when the Duramax is finished, we're actually meant to go on a full lap around Australia. We're gonna take two months off, go over to WA, but the borders shut, I sh you know, like a week before we meant to go and couldn't get over without quarantining. Didn't want to do that. Um, so 
we've still got the trailer and I thought just for this trip instead of putting the canopy on and putting a heap of extra stress and weight in the car we'll just go a tray back and then tow the trailer so that's why we've got this um, it's pretty bloody fancy anyway so it's got all your hot water system shower it's just a lot nicer so I need to kit out my canopy and do a bit of an update on that just to come but for this it's bloody work mint look at that huge tent in here but the coolest thing if you come around here because this trailer's on bags, there's actually a little spirit level. Oh, copy right. Little spirit level at the front here, I'll show you. Right there, and I was like, what are they for? And you can use the switches for the bags to set your level left and right, and basically get the tent bang on flat. So when you're sleeping, you're not on an angle falling off, which is always a problem with like a rooftop tent. If you park on a bit of an angle, you can't really straighten it out, but with the trailer, you can actually change those switches in here somewhere. Mm, there, see? Bang, PSI and get it dead level. So I've done that, which makes the sleep so much better. It's funny, because I never said I'd tow a trailer, but I kind of liking this thing. It's just so easy. Uh-oh, are you converting? Nah, I don't think, I don't think I'll convert. I'll always have a canopy. I thought it might have held me back going up in the gala, but it didn't, so. I don't know yeah, how many camper trailers had up there. A what? Gazebo. Yeah, no. Nah. That's still a Perth thing. No one ever has these in Perth. They use awnings and stuff. <laughs> Things. Why did you take your canopy off? See, Maka got rid of his canopy altogether. Oh, Mrs. wanted more room, so we went to the rooftop tent. And it was free off TJ, so. <laughs> yeah. And it's heaps of room in there. It was very, very roomy. It's, it's not real good when you put your keys in there. No, and it's a pain in the ass to set up. <laughs> and a pain in the ass to unset up to get your keys out to unset it back up again. Yeah. What was it with me and keys? So the keys for that are in this. <laughs> <laughs> Classic stitch up. Yeah. <laughs> Oh well, we're here. Here with the drift car the other day. Oh, you good at doing that? Yeah. Putting keys in the wrong spot. I'll tell you what, those secateurs are bloody having a good time. What are they called secateurs? Cicadas. Yeah, the cicadas, not secateurs. That's what you use for cutting bushes. Is it? Secateurs? Cicadas. So hard to see. Next morning. I need a, yeah, a bit of bread is my stand. So I guess the big question is, everyone wants to know, is the Duramax better than the LS? Like this is the first trip and I said I was gonna do- Oh, oh the Duramax! <laughs> <laughs> the Duramax! I'm so sorry. That was perfect. Oh Wait, if you ever need a lens cap, use a Duramax. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm very Ruined. Sorry. Oh, I understand what that lens is worth. I'm yeah. Oh, shit. I'm gonna do a separate video on why I swapped it, but first impressions, um, I do prefer the Duramax. Like, a few reasons. First, I haven't even seen the fuel gauge move yet, and with the LS, I would have been like empty. And it's very smooth inside and it's quieter. I know it's cool to have a loud car, and I've had years of that, but to have a nice, quiet car where you can like have a conversation oh God, and aircon that works, it's been really nice. So, I do prefer it and the boys who are outside the car think, man, that thing's a lot cooler with a Duramax. So it was the right thing to do, I reckon, for the car, for what I'm gonna use it for. It's gonna be like the Tourer for now on. And um, yeah, the 80's a bit of a, the race car thing. So first impressions on the trip, I do prefer it. I think it was the right choice. And I think my microphone has turned off for that whole thing. Oh no, we're good. I'm gonna have to take you through the next part because this is pretty much where I stopped filming. But thanks to TJ, he was filming the rest of the trip and this is where things started to go, well, horribly wrong. The first challenge was the backside and the gala, but this was only the start of the dramas.
I think here the corner and the large pothole at the bottom of the track just washed off too much speed to drag the trailer up. I tried to get a pull up, but that just got everyone else stuck. It's soft. Luckily, I was able to reverse back down and there was another track around. Don't keep that, don't tell uh, it. If that wasn't bad enough, then we found the soft stuff. Now I just want to point out that my max track was still bolted to the roof of my canopy, which was at home, far away from here. Amateur mistake for a beach trip. With a stroke of luck, a traveller behind us had a couple of max tracks we could borrow. Now my tactic here was to minimise wheel speed to try and stay on top of the sand. In my opinion, it was that soft, putting my tyres down even lower wouldn't have been enough, especially with the trailer on. But I'll let you guys have that debate in the comments section. <laughs> Trailer mate. I don't like trailers anymore. Brought a trailer and this is where you get. <laughs> no I'll good. Sand really? sitting in the air con, you know, like, oh yeah, put the max tracks on and then dig them out of a meter of sand after I bury them. <laughs> and then put them back under again. Then I'll bury them again and then put them back under again. So <laughs> what mate? We're at a new campsite now. Everyone's left us, but um, we're doing a last night on our own. But that switch that I was telling you about is down here. Um, so that there's like the five-way switch. The tunes have actually worked really good on this trip. Um, I pretty much left it in tune three, which is like the tow haul mode. And it's done basically everything we can do. I got bogged a few times, but it's always had plenty of torque to get out of it. And like I said, I can't use that last tune um, until I get the box built. In my opinion, that sort of was just the most reliable way to do this um, to make sure the thing works. And actually I did a takeoff before. It's a really clean tune. The thing with diesel is when they blow a ton of soot, there's a heap of Duramaxes around that blow heaps of soot. It means they're kind of overfueling and they're not matching the air properly. So obviously on startup when it first takes off, there's a bit of soot before the turbo spools, but once it comes up and matches the fuel, it's really clean, which makes me think it's a perfect tune. Really soaked with that. Um, the other thing that we tried that we added on the other day was these bump stops and it was actually just today I nicked a massive, massive hit and um, they bottomed right out but I've been watching basically if you can see there on the bottom there's that little rubber, that black o-ring and that was sitting maybe 10 mil from the bottom like all weekend um, which makes me think it never bottomed out so it's just, just bottomed out after that last hit today we just came down a hill and I felt it bang straight, straight bottomed out but it makes me think before that point, whenever it flexed up, the uh, bump stops were working. So I put only 150 PSI in there. They can take a heat more, but that's all my compressor at work could <laughs> max out at. Um, so they've been really good. Obviously, they're new coils as well. So I got them from Superior, and they're basically a four inch heavy coil. And because this motor is so, uh, so heavy, it sits at three inch. So I wanted the thing sitting at three inch. That's sort of legally what it's engineered for. So having the four inch coil brings it down to that level and it's stiff enough to handle the weight and it has been really balanced. When I go over bumps, I can feel the front and back move at the same time. So I haven't had a really good look other than that. 
The bonnet hasn't been lifted much. The starter mode is packed up and shit itself, which is a pain because that's like the only thing I didn't really get that was second hand. It was like the one thing I got that was brand new and it stopped working, but go figure. Other than that, it's been really mint. So stoked with the first trip on the patrol. It's done super well. We're going to enjoy this last night. I'm going to have a couple weeks off from the cameras, but by the time you're watching this, it would have been next year. So we're filming this just before Christmas and New Year's. So the channel's gonna have a bit of a break, but if you're watching this now, we're obviously back. And this is kind of the finale for the Duramax build. A few little tweaks and things to fix up, but um, all in all, I'm really, really happy with it. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. And we'll see you on the next episode. And actually, no, I'm not gonna tell you. The, the next build is just, you think this was cool. The next thing will just, you won't, you won't see it coming. It is something I've been working on for at least two years. Since I moved to Queensland, I've been working on this thing. And we're finally gonna start dropping content. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you there. What you doing, babe? Hey, what? <laughs> How do you like the trailer? See, the kitchen's badass on this thing. And anyway, we're making guacamole. It's not baby friendly. It's that drawer got stuck. Don't worry about that. And then the clips are really hard. You just don't know how to use it. It's but just she... built for a man. Anyway, you've had a good trip though. The patrol, you like this motor or the old one? This one. She, she likes this motor, but that was a weird face. See our chairs over there? That's where we're setting up for the night. Well, not the night, but right now. Gonna have some guac on the hill. And um, I'll let you know how it tastes. Guys, if you like this video, make sure to click up here to subscribe to the channel. Click over here for our latest merchandise on our website. And down below or to the side, I'm not sure where it is, is, is our last episode. If you haven't watched it, click on that to check it out. See you guys.